ahead. We are being recorded. If anybody has an objection, uh, please let us know, but we will cut out the, in the joys and concerns and the sharing part, uh, any part that's put on after this recording issue is put on later on TV, on YouTube, um, it will be deleted. So it was, personal information will not be shared, but it is being recorded to be uh, put on uh, later at a later time. Wanted to welcome, every, welcome everybody to our services today. I would suggest if you haven't already that you go up to your, and if it's a computer, I know you go up and to click view and then you hit uh, speaker view, please. Speaker view will allow the, the person who is speaking, of course, to be seen. Um, okay, this beautiful day is going to be the most unusual day for a while. We have a, lot, a number of changes that you, you have seen. One is the time change, and we may have lost a number of people who, because we're not out and about in the world these days, may not have realized that the time has changed. Also, for those of you and those of you here today on the live Zoom know who I am, but those of you who are watching um, uh, later on on YouTube may not realize that I am not the preacher. Um, the preacher is now helping he and Kathy, Rick and Kathy are celebrating the birthday of a very special little two-year-old grandchild named Valerie Rose. He will be back in town uh, tonight they were not able to go to uh, Jacob's first uh, in-person service uh, at his church because he had been exposed, as, as I had, as our worship team had, to the COVID virus. Which brings me to another. So we have a different kind of service today than we had. And that's, as you have recalled, as you've been informed, is because we have, the worship team has been exposed to COVID. Uh, and uh, but all seems to be turning out okay uh, as far as our joys and concerns that we're going to share with one another in a moment. Uh, the joy that I have is that uh, that I have been tested as has Chuck and Dennis and uh, no, I'm, I'm sorry Chuck you have not been but I have been Rick and Kathy and I and Dean all have been tested um, and we are negative, so all is good. Thanks be to God. Now we have a, a few concerns, but all of those have, I think have been listed in our newsletter. And we have spoken about friends who we've lost or, or who have been sick and a number of people have had COVID. But this is gonna be your opportunity to join in and share. Well, first we'll do joys and concerns and then we will go to announcements. If you have a joy or concern, then if you would unmute and speak one at a time and tell me of a joy of concern you would like to share at this time. Then let's go to it. announcements. Uh, are there any announcements anyone would like to make? Yes, I'd like to thank everyone from the church that participated in the Alzheimer's Walk contributions. I handed those in on Friday to Diane Torgerson. We are still accepting um, contributions through November and December. So uh, if you can drop them off at the church or mail them to me, uh, we'll be very happy to accept them. And thank you to all those that participated. Are there any more? If not, then let's go to our worship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Join me now in our call to worship. Come away and rest for a while. Leave behind your busyness to be fully present to God. We have come for relief from life's turmoil. God gathers us as a shepherd gathers his sheep. God's steadfast love surrounds us here. We come seeking the Holy Spirit's comfort and care. We already feel her love and eagerness to embrace us. On this All Saints Sunday, 
let us pause to remember Gordon Stedman, Sue Gross, Peggy Smith, our family, neighbors, several members of the clergy and others who have gone before us in the past year and have been welcomed into the great church triumphant. Let us pray in silence. Amen. We will now worship God in song, singing for all the saints, led by the choir from Gross Point Memorial Church, Gross Point Farms, Michigan. Let us now pray our prayer of confession. Holy God, we are weary sojourners. In our wearing of masks, avoiding public gatherings, and spending so much time watching screens, we're losing our grip on faith. We're caught between the selfishness of wanting to do whatever we want without regard for others and wanting to be helpful, generous, and respectful of our neighbor. Help us to lean on you and each other. Remind us, O oh God, of your presence. Encourage our hearts and help us to be your people to the best of our ability in these strange days. We are the church, God's forgiven and forgiving people, working to become a temple in which God is pleased and pleased to dwell. Let us give thanks for God's pardon and continuing offering of healing. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning uh, from the Old Testament is from the 103rd Psalm, verses 1 through 5. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. And from the New Testament, Philippians, the fourth chapter, verses four through seven. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. These are the words of our Lord. 
I'm going to talk to you today about gratitude, specifically the three steps of gratitude. In reflecting on what seems it seems to be uh, in these last seven months of isolation and or at least semi-isolation and going through the most anxiety-ridden, contentious election ordeal I can remember, I was struggling a bit to remember exactly what normal looks like. I know it's not normal to go to Atlanta to see three of our kids and have to stay in a motel instead of their welcoming guest rooms. It is not normal to stay at least six feet away from those kids and my six grandchildren and not to have seen our West Coast kids for, over, for almost a year. And this isn't even touching my angst about my church family and my neighbors and my volunteer work. Oh, woe is me could be my mantra. And I, when I go to bed some night, many nights, that is indeed my mantra. This is what one might easily call my pity party. Thankfully, I wake up the next morning with a rosier outlook for the day, most days. What I described previously though is a form of depression. Thankfully, not the clinical depression suffered by some of my friends and family. Depression call cases are accelerating as you've heard. And, and it's, if I start with prayer, then I go and I seek advice from the experts. I have heard counselors over the years in various NPR and other programs, such programs, advised their patients with depression to keep a gratitude journal. I'm sure you have heard the same. Writing each day an entry of something, even the smallest something for which they are grateful. It seems it's a very successful element in the overall strategy to combat depression. I also look to theologians to who have wisdom to share about how to cope with adversity. Brother David Stendhal Rast, now over 90 years old, was born in Austria and spent his teenage years under Nazi uh, occupation. The Benedictine Munn is a fun, uh, founder of a network called A Network for Grateful Living. And he's a beloved teacher on spiritual gratitude. Uh, Brother Stendhal Rast, draws important connections between his vocation and, and his past, his, his experiences living through that fascist regime, regime. And I heard all of this in a, a broadcast and a conversation with Krista Tippett on her show on being a, number, a couple of years ago. There he said, to open your eyes and know another day, we can't take the day for granted. In my youth, he goes on to say, we couldn't take it for granted because every night the bombs fell. These, uh, there are all sorts of reasons why we couldn't see another day, and yet you do. And that's a wonderful thing. I can imagine our young people growing up in inner city uh, housing experiences that same kind of trauma. Some of us from the Savannah Presbytery recently just read a book and the book was called Nobody Cries When I Die. And it's about a uh, Latina minister who grew up in a really rough neighborhood that sounded much like what the brother had described. Only the author regularly heard bullets into the, hitting the walls and even observed a, an innocent four-year-old girl gunned down right by his side. So how does Brother David use his wisdom on how joy and gratitude take shape in these difficult times, times like now? He goes on to say that he frames gratitude as a practice, not an attitude, rather than a reaction to what's going on to the, on the world outside and something that's beyond his control. Um, I, you can't be grateful, he says, for a war in a given situation or violence or domestic violence or sickness. I might add here a pand pandemic. There are many things for which you can be grateful, he acknowledges, but in every moment you can, uh, I'm sorry, there are many things for which you cannot be grateful, he acknowledges, but in every moment you can be grateful. I think he's trying to tell me that even uh, in the, regardless of circumstances, you can find the tiniest bit of gratitude every day. 
Brother David breaks down gratefulness now into three steps in his methodology. One he calls stop, the other one he calls look, and then the third he calls go. The stops part is where you stop stepping away from the, or you stop by stepping away from the business of the world and of your mind. Most of us are caught up in their schedules and deadlines and rushing around. And here again, I'm going to add, insert isolation and anxiety. And so the first thing we need to do is that we have to stop because otherwise we're not going into the present moment at all. And we can't even appreciate the opportunity we might be given because we are so caught up with the thoughts of when will this pandemic ever end? Or will we ever be able to achieve something even close to racial just judgment? Or why can't we all just be friends? The next step is the look step. Look means to assess and behold the situation right in front of you, right then, right now. And, Doc, and Brother Stendhal Rass asks, what's, what's the opportunity of this given moment? Only this moment and the unique opportunities you might be given. To put this in a personal realm, I've waited for some time to share the moment with you and when my friend Jamil, El, he's Reverend Jamil El Shiar, would represent the Presbytery in uh, celebrating my commissioning as a CRE, that's a commission ruling elder, and to have Rick present me with the absolutely beautiful clerical stove that Kathy made in celebration of my first year anniversary as a commission ruling elder. Oops, life happened. The regular service in which I was to preach and share this moment with all of you wasn't going to happen. And for a very good reason. Now what? I remembered at that point, the, broad, broad, uh, the podcast rather that brother David um, uh, and all it came with in perspective. I had been given another opportunity. I'm able to be the one to be the experiment and yet another vehicle for worshiping God. After all the information coming to me through all my studies and so forth about this emerging church that we talk about, now I can be part of the emerging church along with you. God is indeed good. Okay, we'll go to the third step. That's the practice of gratefulness that comes from stopping and looking around. If we really see what the opportunity is, we must, of course, not stop there, but we must do something with it. Go. Avail yourself of that opportunity, Stendhal Rast says. And that's what we're doing here today. We're using this opportunity in these circumstances to praise God in appreciation for all we have been given. So this is the go part of gratitude, making the most of our opportunity. A practice of gratitude is not about dismissing sadness or anger or fear or anxiety or confusion. Rather, it offers us the opportunity to see what often experience, uh, we can often experience multiple feelings at the same time. So we can welcome joy in the same places and at the same time that we hold these other stress-filled feelings. Who knows? Maybe we'll surprise ourselves with what has been waiting for its turn to happen. Surprise us, Lord, with where you're taking us. Amen. Let us pray. Holy Comforter, please help us to lean on you and each other. When things get crazy around us, when we fail to respect each other's perspective, when we are yelling and jeering, when we would be better off listening and finding means for reconciliation. And when we lose our way in following your path of grace and love, holy God, we give you thanks for being the light at the end of the tunnel. Be with those we remember with our lips and on the prayer list, as well as those written on our hearts. In your most holy name we pray. Amen. Go with you now. Go with hope, for God is with us every day. Go in peace, for God turns us away from hostility. Go in love, for God loves us immeasurably. And again, make this day, this week, the opportunity that you've been given. 
Amen. Thank you for joining our celebration. Thank you.